right, it's hard to avoid a deer because you never know when it's coming. By the time you do see it, it's often too late. But what if there were crossings for animals just like the ones used by humans? In some places, planners have built exactly that. And data shows that animals are using them, which means that close calls like this are far less likely to happen. Chat, can I be honest, chat? Isn't it kind of bad that he even tried to, to maneuver around it with a truck? Isn't it like with a truck, like it's, it, it won't matter? Like he's just gonna, he's just gonna roll it? Are far less likely to happen. Hitting an animal is a risk anywhere roads are built through animal habitats. And as more roads are built, there are more opportunities for collisions. Okay. We're saying he tried not to hit it, but he has a truck. Like you understand that like that the actual insane danger that he, that, that he, he would be to everybody else and himself by trying to maneuver around it. According to a 2008 study commissioned by the U.S. Congress, the number of animal vehicle collisions was increasing. Experts blamed the rise on more vehicle miles traveled combined with a growing North Should American react? population. But the official tally excludes accidents that have less than $1,000 in property damage. If you account for minor collisions, unreported Bang. accidents, and Bang. other variables, Bang. experts estimate at least 1 million collisions with large animals, Bang. meaning deer, elk, and moose, occur every year in the United States. And while animal vehicle collisions rarely cost lives, they do cost money. In the U.S., wildlife vehicle collisions cost over $8 billion every year. Money that is spent Where? on vehicle repairs... Holy shit! Billion. They do cost money. In the U.S., wildlife vehicle collisions cost over $8 billion every year. Money that is spent on vehicle repairs, medical costs, and other expenses. And although humans tend to survive, animals often get killed. In the same report, researchers found that vehicular traffic threatened 21 endangered species, including the bighorn sheep. In some places, highway Aww. planners have solved the problem by building fences to keep animals off the road, a relatively cheap solution that has been proven to reduce roadkill by over 50%. But although fencing reduces roadkill, it neglects a wider problem. What Besides the risk of collision, roads harm animals by dividing wildlife populations and limiting their ability to find mates, food, and other necessities of life. In Canada, wildlife scientist Tony Clevenger has been studying how road construction affects animals in Banff National Park. It can have important impacts on the reproductive success because females aren't being able to access important spring habitat uh, because they're not crossing the highway. So it's, it's, it's important that, that we maintain these movements and we maintain this access to the important biological they're cooking them all, dude. throughout the year. And wildlife crossing structures do that. Beginning in the 1980s, authorities began installing a system of underpasses and overpasses in Banff. The structures were designed for animal use only. That's a and were lot. located where animals were likely to cross the road. The data speaks for itself. For example, here in, on the trans Highway in Banff National Park, there were, were on average more than 100 elk vehicle collisions per year before the fencing and the wildlife crossing structures, and it, now it's down to less than a half dozen. Uh, so you're saying waste of money? But they just said it, that they lose eight billion on car repairs because of the because of the animals. So by default, you're wrong. These are huge reductions by having these mitigation measures in place that are improving motorist safety. They're saving lives, and also in a protected area like Banff National Park, it's important because the objective of this national park is to protect wildlife. Instead of blocking the road entirely, planners used fences to funnel wildlife towards the crossing structures, which were planted with native vegetation. A few species, like deer, elk, and moose, immediately started using them and were followed by more skeptical species. They're like so ugly, dude. dude. Aren't they so ugly? Look at it, dude. Look at it. It looks like it belongs in the bottom of the sea, dude. Like, uh, like one of those, one of those swimming. Dude, does he not? Look at this. What is that, dude? immediately started using them and were followed by more skeptical species like wolves and grizzlies. Within a few decades, even the most reluctant species like lynx Cougars. had adapted to using the crossings. In 2012, a male grizzly was recorded crossing the structures 66 times in one summer. By crossing the highway, the bear's habitat expanded to include potential mates on the other side of the road, which decreases the likelihood of inbreeding. What we've been able to show is that by having these overpasses and underpasses in place, we've restored genetic <laughs> connectivity across the highway here in Banff National Park. Wildlife crossing structures are fairly common in some parts of the world, 
particularly in Western European countries like the Netherlands. But there are relatively few in North America, and the success of the Banff crossings has encouraged similar projects in the United States, like this rendering of an overpass being built in Washington State. And in 2012, the Wyoming Department of Transportation built an overpass that reconnected an ancient migration route of the pronghorn antelope. So if these crossings are improving safety and restoring habitats, why aren't they everywhere? Probably the biggest factor that would limit construction of wildlife crossings is, is cost and, and having the funding within the transportation agency budgets to build these wildlife crossing structures. Structures can save money in the long run, but the initial investment is significant. Constructing an overpass like this one in Banff typically costs several millions of dollars. So to create more cost-effective solutions, Clevenger organized a design competition with a group of experts that included ecologist Nina Marie Lister. They named it Arc That's pretty cool. Animal Road Crossing. Our argument was for the money that was spent, you could be getting a lot more value if you designed them specifically for the target client, which is wildlife and humans driving underneath them. Instead of adapting traditional plans from highway engineers, ARC encouraged different stakeholders to collaborate on structure design. There had to be a landscape architect, an architect, and an engineer, as well as ecologists. And so for the first time ever, you had a very different way of designing a structure. And we asked for them to be ecologically sustainable. They also had to consider materials that, that sounds fun to do. reusable, modular, and movable. The contest was a success, and ARC generated groundbreaking solutions, including a winning design that reduced costs and improved safety by removing the need for pillars on the highway. The cost of that overpass was about 30 to 35 percent cheaper than overpasses that were being built at the same time in Banff National Park. The state of Colorado agreed to build the design, but more immediate needs, including a flooding event in 2013, have prevented development. You can see entire roads washed out. Right. The design was never built. But that doesn't mean it won't be. As climate change strains ecosystems and reduces habitats, animals will change their patterns of movement, and the need for effective crossings will become even more acute. To solve the problem, Lister hopes that giraffes are so huge. The designs, which remain viable no, solutions. No, they're not giraffes. The giraffes. Where can they solve the problem once and for all? So you build a network of these bridges that connect in the right places. You've solved the problem for good. It's done. Problem solved. Interesting. Now nah, I'm not gonna watch my my giraffe video. I've seen it too many times.